friends and revolutionaries, back to take a look at the next in the Harry Potter NECA Real Toy series. Real Toy series. And uh, actually this will probably be the last one I do for this month because we've already taken a look at Harry, we've already taken a look at uh, the Dementor. Only one left to take a look at is the Big Kahuna himself, Lord Voldemort. <laughs> now I know the rules, supposed to call him you know who, he who must not be named, Tom Riddle, no, no, we're just going to call him Voldemort, <laughs> played by the very able Ray Fiennes. Ray Fiennes, who, uh, for anyone who, uh, who might remember him as Dollar Hyde from Red Dragon, man has an amazing way of just being creepy by standing somewhere. <laughs> and so, casting him to play Voldemort, just a brilliant casting. Brilliant casting job. I can't think of anybody who could have played Voldemort better. I, I think we got a great character from Ray Fiennes. Awesome. Um, now, of course, got the Harry Potter logo. Got the parchment in the back. Not much to say about the packaging. Not much to say at all. 7-inch scale, Series 2. The other ones that were, I believe, in Series 1 were uh, Snape, Bellatrix, and Fenrea Greyback. And uh, maybe by next year I'll have Bellatrix and Fenrea. But uh, for now, yeah, I think that uh, taking a look at the big guy, Harry's arch nemesis, that's yeah, a pretty appropriate, uh, pretty appropriate thing for Halloween. Uh, there's no bio, you know, no fancy packaging either. You know, for being a NECA figure, oh, and before I forget, just to show off a little bit, NECA, National, uh, oops, National Entertainment Collectibles Association. National Entertainment Collectibles Association. For anybody who didn't know that, because I just learned it myself, that is what NECA stands for. <laughs> so, yeah, Real Toys, National Entertainment Collectibles Association. Something to share. <laughs> but uh, pretty plain packaging for a NECA figure. You know, normally there's maybe something on one side, maybe just like one side with something on there. You know, maybe a write-up or a bio. I mean, if you're a Harry Potter fan, you don't really need one, but... Yeah, it's just rather plain on the packaging on these uh, Harry Potter figures. Um, also, there's no uh, there's no credits. You know, normally there's some uh, there's the credits of the people who worked on the figure. I like to give credit to the people who worked on it, but um, no one put their name on this. So, I guess we'll just go ahead and have to uh, be happy with what we got and pop them out of the pack and have some fun. Be right back. Okay, well. Let's start by reminding ourselves <laughs> that this is a NECA figure. This is a NECA figure. And, uh, and so there's certain things you have to just expect are going to be the case. But even still, <laughs> even take into account that this is a NECA figure, I have to say Voldemort has a lot of shortcomings that um, are really disappointing, are, are very, very disappointing. Uh, for fans, you'll probably love having this figure on your shelf next to the book, next to the books, next to your collection of books. But for me, I I would have liked a little more, not much, just a little, just a, just one of any of the following. <laughs> um, looking at him, obviously, of course, you know he's going to be an awesome sculpt. You know he's going to be a fantastic sculpt. I believe that uh, the, what we've got here is the Voldemort from the Goblet of Fire, in which case he was dueling with Harry. Because they've actually gone through and added a layer on top of, if I can show you real quick. You can see underneath there's the actual body of the figure with the robes sculpted over the body. So, you know, they've actually sculpted these robes out of a fairly hard plastic and giving it a nice kind of billowy, you know, kind of windswept look. And you can see how the legs, you can actually see here how the robes are clinging to the legs on both sides. Underneath, brace yourselves, underneath, you can actually see the legs that are underneath it. And his bare feet. <laughs> You know, it's something where from Goblet of Fire, you know, I was, I, I totally made sense. Okay, you know, he just come back to life. He doesn't have any shoes yet. But, uh, but over the course of the movies, he never got any, you know. As a matter of fact, he changed very little over the course of the movies. 
And uh, Ray Fine sold it. He sold that as, as just being just one of the eerie things about Voldemort is that he goes barefoot. You know, it's it, that, another reason that was such a great actor. But getting back to the figure here, yeah, they actually sculpted a figure, you know, legs and a torso, and then sculpted this wonderfully billowing cloak over him. But they sculpted out of a, of a flat black color and didn't bother to add any highlights or anything to really kind of make it pop. You know, it, it's something where when you look at, the, uh, at some pictures of Voldemort, it almost like, looks like there's a blue light shining off him, like moonlight shining off of him. So a metallic silver kind of color just dry brushed over him, just, just on the highlights, just on the raised areas. You know, I think would have done an amazing job as far as really showing off how well this is sculpted. You can tell, I mean, the natural light hits it just fine, but the black just looks a little boring because there's no, there's nothing there to really grab you. There's nothing really to, to make you go, wow, that looks good. It's just boring. It's just boring. Uh, on the, the paint on the face and the arms, I mean, it's actually quite nice. Take a look at the head with his very angry expression. Clenched teeth, got the snake eyes, and the blood veins kind of popping out all over his head. Almost like snake scales. Runs down the back of his neck. It's actually pretty good. It's actually very nice. They've continued that same kind of vein theme on his hands. Look at how well the hands are sculpted with the nails. And the feet, you know, he does have, does have kind of the dirt on the bottom of his feet as well. Dirty toenails. You know, the detail on it for the arms, feet, you know, for, the, for Voldemort himself, it's very nicely done. This is a shame that they didn't go through and do a little bit more treatment on the remaining, you know, 80% of the figure and give the robes a little bit of a, of a, of a dry brush on them as well. Um, on the uh, Dementor, because obviously he has no legs, it was understandable that the articulation might have been a little limited. But for what he had, it wasn't bad. You know, hinged uh, ball jointed uh, shoulders, uh, hinge at the hand, ball jointed head. The Dementor was actually very nice for how little there was to work with. Voldemort here basically has four points of articulation. The swivel at the waist, which is the only thing on the lower half of his torso. Got a twist on this arm at the shoulder, twist on this arm at the shoulder. There may be a little bit of a hinge on there, but certainly not enough to really, you know, do much with. The head is on a swivel, so it turns left and right, but no ball joint. So, you know, for there not to be a bicep joint, twist at the wrist, you know, a ball jointed head. It's just very weak articulation, even for a NECA figure, a modern NECA figure. Yeah, not, not going to be one of the figures I, I'm, I'm very proud to have. Other than to say that, you know, you've got Voldemort. You know, the, I, think, I think having Voldemort is like saying, I have Darth Vader. It's one of the figures you have to have if you're a Harry Potter fan. It's just such a shame that NECA didn't do a better job. Uh, in the way of his accessories, he does come with the wand, which is another reason I think that this is probably from the Goblet of Fire, because he actually comes with his regular wand. Had this been from uh, the Deathly Hollows, it probably would have been the Elder Wand that he came with. And I don't know if that's the right way for him to hold it, but, oops, but when you watch him dealing with Harry, yeah, Ray Fiennes was very creative in <laughs> making sure of giving Voldemort a very unique way of holding his wand when dueling. Which I appreciate. You know, it, it, it's very rare you see those kind of little quirks on a character, on a personality. I think they did a great job at it. His base which he stands fine by himself, but his base, I've checked, it doesn't you know, match up with the Dementor's base at all. 
It's just kind of a green grass, has one single leaf on it. But um, yeah, nothing much to speak of there either. Uh, as I said, you can stand him on his own or you can peg him on his heel. Like so. Oops. Come on now. I know that uh, when the uh, Goblet of Fire came out, there was a two pack, I believe there was a two pack of uh, Voldemort and Harry with the, uh, with the uh, headstone, with the riddle headstone. And I don't know if this is the same Voldemort from that set. If so, it definitely explains a lot because by himself, not so impressive, but had there been a Harry and more of a diorama kind of feel, it would have made up for what little we get from him here. It would have made much more sense why he's kind of in this preset posed and almost nothing you can do to change it. You know, you can, you can adjust the arm placement slightly. But you're just, it's just a variation on the, on the basic pose. Had this come with Harry or had this been in a two-pack, it would have made perfect sense. I'd like to believe that it is, and I would like to think that if they ever re-release the figure, if they just go back and do just a very metallic blue, not much, just a little bit to highlight kind of the folds and the raised areas on his robes, I think that alone would make it a lot more interesting, not quite so boring. Hope you didn't find this one boring, guys. Uh, got more stuff to get to. Hope you enjoy watching. Rate, comment, subscribe. Join the revolution. We'll see you soon. Bye-bye.